Hi my friends and welcome to the video. So today we are going to be talking about three fragrances from Perry Ellis. I have actually never tried any Perry Ellis fragrances, so I thought I would get three and see what I think of the brand. I know that they have a lot more than three in their range, but we're just gonna start off with these. I found these all at Ross and I found them all for under $20. So before we get started, make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel, that you like, you comment, you interact, so that way I know you're not sleeping on me there. And without further ado, let's get started. So the very first one that I'm going to be having a look at is 360 by Perry Ellis, which is actually a fragrance that came out before I was born. So this came out in 92, I was born in 93. And this absolutely smells like a 90s fragrance. Um, so this has melon, lily, osmanthus, tangerine, rose, lily, lily of the valley, lavender, sage, musk, sandalwood, vetiver, amber, and vanilla. And something about the sweetness of the melon mixed with the osmanthus um, I mentioned this in my last video where I was talking about if the niche samples I had were worthy of a full bottle. And I was talking about how some floral fragrances to me have a pissy or urine-like scent. And something about the sweetness of the melon mixed with the osmanthus gives this a pissy fragrance to me. I think a lot of people would find this to be soapy, floral, clean, slightly woody. It's definitely not a fruity floral, it's a true floral with a woody base. I could see why people would like this, unfortunately I'm just one of those people that picks up that pissiness from the notes. And so this is a fragrance that is going back, I could never ever wear this. I can only imagine in heat that this would get even more hot and sticky. I couldn't even recommend it to my worst enemy, so sorry Ross, I know it was only $10, but that is definitely going back. Next up we have 360 Coral, which came out in 2014, so this is significantly newer than the last one. Okay, so the notes in this one are bergamot, pear, Apple, peach, pink pepper, jasmine, peony, lily of the valley, cashmere wood, tonka bean, musk, and amber. Upon initial spray, this has a shampooy fruitiness because it has a lot of that fruitiness in the beginning, but it is made a little bit more interesting with that pink pepper. It gives it a little bit of kick. The jasmine isn't super endolic, it's not super prominent, it's made softer with that peony. And it's very interesting to me because in all of these fragrances, I got these, I sprayed them, I wrote down my notes, and then I came back to them a few hours later to see what the dry down was like because, you know, I can't put, you know, tons of fragrance on my skin and expect it to uh, be able to smell the difference. So I did it on little cards. And it's very bizarre. But I think it's because of the cashmere wood, the tonka, musk, amber. But the dry down of this kind of smells like a lighter dry down of This Is Her by Zadig and Voltaire. That also has pink pepper, that also has jasmine. So obviously this doesn't have like the chestnut, the whipped cream. But with that pink pepper, the cashmere woods, the jasmine, this has like almost like an eau fresh version dry down of Zadig and Voltaire, this is her. Much more sweet and fruity in the opening, but the dry down is a little bit more creamy, which is interesting because you wouldn't really expect that out of like a light pink bottle like this, but this is significantly more wearable than the regular 360. I just think the regular 360 is completely dated. I don't imagine a lot of people would want to smell like that anymore given all the options that are available. So this one, shampooy on the beginning, dry down is a bit richer. And last but certainly not least, we have 360 Purple. Out of this and Coral, I feel like this one definitely bears a little bit more resemblance to the original, but it's not cloying. It's definitely more of a 
mass appealing type fragrance. So the notes in this one are blackberry, peach, apple blossom, pink rose, jasmine, lily of the valley, mimosa, tuberose, musk, oak moss, and sandalwood. So upon the beginning, you get a blast of fruity sweetness from the blackberry and peach. And as it settles down, you get a bit of the light rose. It's kind of like a velvety rose, not like a heavy, deep, dark rose, but a pink rose, a soft, um, rosy fragrance. And you get a little bit of that tuberose in there, but again, not super heavy, um, because I know tuberose can be a difficult note for a lot of people. And the dry down on this, you get a lot of that oak moss coming through. So I'll say once again, I find this to be a little bit of a floral shampoo type smell versus the coral was a fruity floral shampoo type smell. I think they're both inoffensive. I both think they're light, good for spring summertime. I think that they're going to please a lot of people. I'm not sure about the longevity because I just purchased these. I haven't been able to wear them on skin yet, but I'll give you guys an update. And I feel like this one would probably be my favorite out of all of them. I like that it's sweet in the beginning, but it's balanced with the floral. It doesn't stay, you know, super fruity. It's both fruity and floral with a little bit of musky undertone, very easy reach. And I feel like this would layer nicely with a lot of things. So I know it's a short video today, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hadn't ever tried the Periellus fragrances, but I'd see them every time I would go in a discount store and I was like, God, I wonder if they're any good. And I know that if I'm thinking that, then somebody at home is probably thinking that too, and maybe this could be a useful video. And if there's any from the range that you guys absolutely love and you think that I need to have in my collection, please let me know. I'm always looking for more fragrances and that'll wrap it up for today. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.